Chapter 2 The funeral was on Sunday in a small chapel at the cemetery. Well over a hundred people were there to say goodbye. My mother would have liked that. She loved people and crowds. After the service, we walked by the open coffin. I looked at her for a long time. The bandages were gone now and she looked peaceful, but nothing like she had looked in life. I kissed her on the forehead and walked out into the lobby, then through the glass doors outside. I didn't want to talk to anyone. After the funeral, several people came back to our apartment. They milled around eating the catered food, talking quietly. I wanted to be alone, but Sam said that I should stick around and talk with people. Jacob, they're here to honor your mother and to be here for us. I suppose he was right, but I still wanted to be alone. I stood by the window in the living room watching my mother's friends and wishing my father was with me. I needed him. We tried to reach him by cable and phone, but he was out in the field and no one knew when he would be back or even exactly where he was. He would have been here if he had known. The front door opened and Bill Brewster, a friend of my dad's, strode into the room. It had been at least two years I had, since I had seen him. When he entered, the room grew quiet. He was a tall, good-looking guy with long, shaggy hair. He wore blue jeans and a red Gore-Tex coat. He was a field biologist and looked out of place among so many university professors. He reminded me of my father, who never looked quite right in our apartment or in the city, but put him in the woods and he looked like an old tree that had always been there. My spirit lifted somewhat when he came in. Sam walked over to him and shook his hand and the talk started again. He talked to Sam for a moment and then he spotted me and came over. Sorry to hear about your mom, he said uncomfortably. Thanks. He looked around the room. I don't know anyone here. Friends of my mom's and Sam's, mostly from the university. Where's your dad? He's out in the field. We weren't able to reach him. Really? Nobody seems to know where his camp is. They tried to reach him by radio, but there was no response. I'm not surprised, Bill said. He's in a pretty remote area and he moves around a lot. Do you know where he is? I was in a new study area a couple of months ago. I imagine that he's still in that same general vicinity. I was excited by the news. Could you show me? Sure, Bill said. Do you have a map? I nodded and led him down the hall to my bedroom where I had an entire wall of topographical maps of Kenya. Whenever my father wrote a letter about where he was, I marked it on the map. It helped me to feel connected to him. Sometimes I'd stare at the maps and calculate what time it was in Kenya and imagine what my father might be doing at that moment. I'm impressed, Bill said, looking at the wall. You've got better maps than your dad does. He turned to the opposite wall, which was covered with photos of my father had sent me. Your dad was always photo happy. He walked over to the wall and pointed at a photo of me with a tranquilizer rifle at the zoo with my dad. I remember this, he said. Didn't he let you dart a couple of follow deer for him that day? I nodded. Yeah, I remember. You made a good shot, and he was proud as heck about that. He laughed. It's ironic. A lot of fathers are so proud of their sons when they kill their first deer, but your dad was proud when you immobilized one. I remembered it too. It was one of my best moments with my dad. He got in trouble for it, I said. That's an understatement, Bill said. The zoo almost fired him. They frowned on 12-year-old darting their animals. Your father didn't give a damn, though. He was craziest, crazy then, and he still is. When Sam said my father was crazy, it made me angry. When Bill said it, it made me happy. Bill walked over to the photo of my father. 
and him in Kenya working on a tranquilized elephant. I remember this tusker, he said, a dinosaur. Look at the ivory on him. My father was attaching a radio collar around the elephant's neck while Bill measured the tusks. The whole herd had big ivory. Bill went on excitedly. Poachers have taken most of the big tuskers. These are some of the only ones left. He looked at me sadly. Of course, they're probably gone now. When I left, the poachers had, run, had the run of the country. It was driving your dad nuts. How is my dad? He's okay, I guess. Bill walked over to the map and studied it for a moment and then back to me. Like I was saying, things are bad in Kenya. The drought has really screwed up the country. There's no food, the coffee crop failed, and the tourism is way down because of crime. In some parts of the country, there have even been border skirmishes. The drought is worse in Somalia and Uganda. The people are crossing the border in droves. It's a mess. What about my dad? Something was up. Bill wasn't telling me everything. Your dad's pretty dead and stubborn. The most pig-headed man I've ever known. He refused to leave when things got bad. His airplane is down and he's been waiting for parts for months. He's been radioing tracking elephants from the ground. Not easy to do. The Institute is pulling out until things cool down. I'm surprised they answered the phone when you called. He's one of the few foreign biologists left in the bush. Is he going to be all right? <coughs> Bill shrugged his shoulders. It's hard to say. He's pretty much on his own now. To tell you the truth, Jake, one of the reasons I came here today was to see if he pulled out. I was hoping he'd be here. I wish he was here too, now more than ever. Is he in danger? I don't know. There are a lot of bad things going on there. The military is spread pretty thin trying to keep on, keep a lid on things. They're concentrating their men in around the cities where the people are going. The bush is wide open and the poachers know it. Where is he? I pointed to the map. I don't know exactly, but... Jacob? I turned and saw Sam standing in the open doorway. He looked irritated. Sam stepped into the room. What are you doing? He asked. Talking to Bill. I see that. I was just telling him about his dad, Bill said. Sam ignored him. Well, Jacob, you have people here. Some of them would like to talk to you before they leave. Okay, I said. I'll be out soon. Well, don't be too long, he said, and left. I was embarrassed. Bill looked at me sympathetically. Maybe you should. No, I said. I want to know where my father is. He turned back to the map. I can't say for sure, but I can point out the general area where we were working. <coughs> Thanks. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. It's near the Tanz Tanzanian border, about here. He pointed to an area called the Nerguman um, Escarpment. Okay, that is chapter two. We're going to read chapter three today, so leave it open. But what we want to do is think, we need to think five to ten word sentence, five to ten word sentence of what happened. Go ahead and write it down on your paper. Five to ten word sentence of what happened. Think of the most important things that happened in there. What do you think one of the most important things? Let's to kind of help us, Camden. Um, Bill talks to Jacob about where his father is. Okay, Bill talks to Jacob about where his father is. What else was happened? The major thing there, more than Camden. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so whose funeral? Yeah, Jacob's mom's funeral, and then Bill is showing Jacob where his father is. Maybe. Okay, write your sentence. Five, write your sentence. Five to ten word sentence. I have pencils up here or on my desk if you need a pencil.
anyone finish their sentence? No? Parker, what do you got? What was, how long is the sentence again? Five to ten words. It has to be um, no more than ten, but at least five. So I got one. Okay, what do you got? Bill, Bill is showing where his dad might be. Okay. Should we include grand, his mom's funeral, that it's his mom's funeral? You think it might just be that? Okay, that's okay. Okay. Kaiser, what do you have? Okay, so it has to be a sentence, though, remember? So you, that looks like a title, and I think that has um, important events, but we want to make sure it's a sentence. Okay. Okay, what's your sentence? Okay. Any other sentences that we have? Georgia? Okay, so you're, are, you think that was the important part that Sam got mad? Do you think it's important that an event that Bill shows what, um, Jacob where his father is? So should you include that? Okay. Bye. So you're going to just have you write it on the paper. Yeah. Okay. okay, now we're going to do a reader's reaction. This is three sentences. It, at least, it could be more than three sentences. Of your thoughts of what happened. Three sentences of your thoughts of what happened. So it could be about the character's actions, what you think about the relationships between the characters, Predictions you want to, you could make. Yeah, Maya. Okay, do we have, um, does anyone have one, what's re one rat reaction you had to this chapter? Kim, what's one reaction? I think that Sam thinks that um, Jacob is like annoying and he doesn't like him. And then he's trying to understand what he's going, going through. And oh. he's more pathetic. So do you feel like Jacob's just like not, or Sam's like not really understanding, but Bill? Yeah, I Uh huh. Okay. Um, I like the use of descriptions. I mean, dialogue. They do a good job with. They kind of do dialogue different. They group it. They cluster it together and have conversations in it, which is kind of interesting way to do it. There, and they did and a lot of description too. Okay. Any other readers' reactions? Any other reactions? Couple more minutes. Mm 